G'day YouTube, how are you? Was here. Okay, the FZ1, we've gone to Fred at Pro Cycles. Now, uh, Pro Cycle Slacks Creek. Fred has done uh, four of my bikes. Well, this will be the fourth one. First one was 2005 anniversary Fat Boy 1550. Uh, he did a custom dual dyno on that. And then a 2013 Fat Bob, we did a stage two race kit in that, the custom dyno, sprocket upgrades, few other odds and ends. And both those bikes were sensational. Uh, he's got a customized shop. And then the uh, MT10, we did a uh, Woolwich race tune on that. And now we come to the FZ1. Now it does have a power commander in it. And it goes extremely well, very smooth. But what I'm finding is that the bottom end up to 4,000 RPM, it's just a bit sluggish. And so we're going to have a little look at that map and figure out what's going on. So have we started? Yes, we have. All right, so we've done our base run and we've come up with a few problems in relation to why it was running the way it was. I could have sworn this thing was as smooth as butter, but guess what? I'm so glad I've come down to Fred now, and I'll let Fred tell you what's going on. Well, was you probably, like, saying it's smooth, it's probably not too bad down low. I've, I've seen a little variances down that low-end fueling that we need to fix anyway, but straight away, if you're looking at doing track days or anything high-end throttle, this you've got a bit of an issue here. So you can see here, I'll make it one screen so you can see it easier. Right, that's your air fuel line. So see it almost looks like a power curve, it actually goes up like a ramp and it's consistently ending up at almost 15 to 1 in the fueling which is way, way too lean. So that on a racetrack would cause engine damage. Yeah. Um, that's where it's under its highest load, it's in its demand for fuel. Um, you know, on a dyno we've got sort of still air so that being here I'd like to see that like, you know, 12 and a half, 12, 8 to 1 on a dyno so when you're on a track it's, it looks a lot better. So when I see something like that, um, something like this with this sort of kilometres on it, I'd say right, we've got a fuel problem, we've got either a fuel system problem where we could go, it's going to be pump, um, in-tank filter, maybe injectors, something running out and actually starving the bike for fuel. But you can see here on the fuel map, Right, see all these numbers in this high end of the map? Yep. So at some stage when this has been tuned, it looks like it's been quite rich. People have taken a lot of fuel out of it to fix whatever's been going on. So what I've, what I've done, you could see me playing around a little bit then on the dyno, um, and we did a few few tight runs with that, with that deal to try and make sure that was right. Um, what I've done is I've changed those numbers there. I've taken the minuses out, because that's actually taking a lot of fuel out of the high end throttle. I drop those, if we go receive map, I've just, I changed those numbers to minus fours from minus 22. So I've taken a fair bit of fuel out of that high end. Well, you can see back over on the other screen, I did one more run after seeing that run, right, which is this one here, I'll overlay it, which is the blue run. You can see there, the fueling has now gone quite rich, just from taking that fuel out. The horsepower's gone straight up. It's picked up seven horsepower there. Woohoo! So, yeah, bonus. So that's great in two ways it tells me you haven't got a pump problem, haven't got a filter problem, it's purely a tuning issue. Um, so we can then go through, and obviously I'd like, that's going a little bit rich now, I'd like to bring that up and make that line nice and smooth right through. So I can be thankful I didn't just take this bike to a track straight away. It would have hurt it. Would have yeah, hurt it. Yeah, would have hurt it. 15 to 1 on air fuel, it's, it's rich enough that it's going to make enough heat that it will cause dramas. You know, long jeopardy wise, eventually it would, would cause it a problem, you know. Yeah, so we want to um, make this engine last. So, fuel, yeah, you as you can see, fuel. fueling and tuning are, are your ultimate with these yep. bikes. Straight away, like that, you know, that's that's way, way too lean, and that's where you're going to have issues. So, so when we, they added a pipe, did it change it then? The air filter, did it change it then? Maybe, you know, it's hard to say. I mean, it looks like it's had some tuning work done. It. The mapping looks quite good. Um, you know, the numbers are all quite even through the fuel map, so it looks like it has been tuned at some stage on a dyno. Okay. Maybe, you know, 40,000 kilometres ago it was tuned and it needed to be fueling there. Whatever's gone on, it's changed, you know. So um, we're going to do a Woolwich race tune in it yep. and leave the power commander in there and try and work the two in, is that it? That's right. So our plan is we're going to open the Woolwich software up. We're going to go through and see what we can do to de-restrict that standard ECU to make it go faster, yep. make it go better 
get rid of some ignition retards off the lower gears, we'll get rid of things like the O2 sensor, um, we'll drop some thermofan temperatures, a little bit of cool stuff like that that will just help it. Yep. And then we'll, once we've done that, we'll go right over that whole fuel map again um, and just make it so we have some nice linear air fuel lines and make it go like it should. Well, again... Okay, so we've done the uh, tune when we first brought it in. This bike was running lean in the top end, uh, which could very well have damaged on a race day. So lucky I come into Fred to sort out this up to four grand um, uh, sort of flat spot, if you will. Anyway, so doing so, I showed you the chart before, um, and now we'll go here with Fred. So there I was. So that's, we've done the de-restrict first through the Woolwich Race software. Uh, we've rewrote everything, so through the Woolwich side of things, let me show you some of that first, bring it over here. So we've gone yep. through the Woolwich, we've, we've base flashed it via uh, um, a bench harness. So we've gone into advanced settings, we've turned off the exit valve, we've disabled O2 sensors, we've disabled the fuel cut. I'm trying to give you some of those header flames on the shut throttle with your video camera to give you a bit more spectacular. Sweet. And I've also turned <laughs> off the the um, the IS, the air valve. I've also blanked that off when we had the air box off because to get to the ECU, you know, we had to pull the whole air box off um, to get under there. While I was in there, I've blanked the clean air. I've disconnected the standard O2 sensor since I've turned that off. We don't want any input from that. Yep. I've also gone in there. I've gone into the ignition side of things. I've unified it so it just looks at gear group 3. So what that means is you'll find first, second gear, the lower gears have an ignition restriction on them. I've disabled that now, I'm just going to one gear group so they look at the higher gear group for ignition mapping. Yep. So that way you've got a better advance rate in all those lower gears. And you can only do that with um, doing an ECU flash. That's right, ECU flash um, is the only way you can get rid of all that sort of thing. Yep. The other thing I've done is I've gone into the other maps here you'll see in there there's an area where it comes into secondary throttle positioning right into the gear section see all the blue I've made those more aggressive so I've made the secondary throttle butterfly open a bit faster yep I don't like a lot of guys will take those out altogether I think that's a bad idea because they do help with lower throttle positioning they do give it a better airspeed 
So I find leaving them in, but just making them a little bit more aggressive is a better ride, especially for a street bike. Yep. So I've made those a little bit more aggressive, snapped them up a bit for you as well. Yep. Um, the other thing in the advanced settings is we can turn, we can make the fan come on earlier, which yep. is always a good thing. Was that already on or needed to go on no, earlier? No, I've, I've dropped that a little bit more to come on. So the fan temp low now is 94. Um, fan temp high is 101. So I've just made that a little bit earlier. Yep. And I'll just let you know that we've left the... Um power commander on it and Fred was telling yep. me that it just makes it easier to do the fueling is that correct that's correct so if you didn't have a power commander I'd do the whole job through the Woolwich race software but since you've already got the unit on there I love a power commander it works great for fueling um, it's live tuning like this you can see there the fuel map we've still had to take a lot of fuel out of it everywhere um, good run on the dyno has just helped it a bit so we've sharpened that up but just live tuning you can see how when I was doing the tuning before a lot of runs backwards and forwards to get that fueling right and we'll go over and over it with the power commander it's all live so it makes it so much quicker and easier to do the fueling that way and you find they're reliable the power commander yeah great product yep okay. I've, I've, you have very little issues with them i mean there's firmware upgrades and things they do for them but you know we might find one or two a year where we have problems and we use a lot you know okay they, they work great and hand in hand with ecu flash tuning it's a great system you know we can Okay. We can do strict ECUs, get rid of o oxygen sensors and O2 sensors. It saves us having to use O2 optimizers and O2 eliminators where this way we turn it off. It, there's no input from the oxygen sensor. It just works great. Okay. So and that's our chart there? Yeah, so that's good. So it's, I've got your air fuel line nice and sharp now along that bottom line. Um, you know, like that's not a nice air fuel. We've fixed that area where it was going really lean before. Yep. It's jumped up in horsepower obviously because of that. You've gone from a base run at 138, we've now got you to just under 144, which yep. is pretty stout for one of these. A um, bit of more torque as well. You can see there, if I took the cursor at 10,000 revs here, where you've gone from from 100 and, 128 horsepower to nearly 137. So it's picked up almost 10 horsepower at 10,000 revs, yep. which is great gain, you know. Ten and obviously it's, it's not doing this lean stuff here where it was going to do engine damage. Yeah, yeah so well, you, I'm glad I got yeah, in here. You'll be a winner, no problem at all. All right, cheers. Thanks, man. No Thank worries. you. Thank you very much.